Alright folks, so this is actually really, really bad here. So I actually did a video yesterday where I spoke to you guys about like, whoa, look, this is pretty surprising. Tulsi Gabbard is another presidential candidate who went on uh, the Dubin report. The only other one, I believe, was Marianne Williamson. And to Marianne Williamson's credit, she did a really good job on the Dubin report. She really just went in, educated him, just really just, you know, gave it to him. You know, just gave it to him. Good. You know what I'm saying? So, she did a really good job. Now, Tulsi, on the other hand, you know, definitely did not do a good job whatsoever. Not only were there multiple areas where it's like Dave Rubin is setting up the questions by doing this, you know, bogey right-wing framing, but in this clip that we're going to see here, she explicitly, outwardly agrees with that framing. So, it's, it, it's one thing to allow and sort of implicitly agree with the framing, which you would have the plausible deniability tactic, but it's a whole nother thing when you just outright agree with it. So, also, you have to understand that now these interviews are being used by right wing hack jobs, hatchet smearmen, like this guy named Ra Ryan Savagera. All right, he is somebody who <laughs> he works for the Daily Wire, his head looks really weird. Um, but he is a hatchet man, that's who Ryan is, and he posted this saying. Democratic presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard tells Dave Rubin on the Rubin Report, I don't support open borders. Without secure borders, we don't really have a country. Gabbard admits that what the other Democrat candidates are pushing for, quote, is essentially open borders. Now, this is a very odd comment, of course, because the Democrats do not support open borders, and so that claim is very odd because, quite frankly, it's just straight up incorrect. So... Uh, let's go ahead and hear out Tulsi Gabbard here. Um, so immigration, I think there's a general sense that the, the candidates, the Democrats are basically trying to outdo each other for open borders, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, a, do you think that's a fair way to start the question? And B, where, where do fair. you sit on that? Uh, I, don't, I don't support open borders. Uh, without secure borders, we don't really have a country. And while some of the other Democratic candidates will say, well, open borders, that's a conservative argument, and that's not really what's being advocated for. If you look at the practical implications of some of the things they're pushing for, it is essentially open borders. Um, I think there's a few things that we've got to do when we're talking about immigration reform. Uh, one is we've got to have secure borders. This is not uh, Trump's wall from sea to shining sea. It's about seeing, again, what makes sense. You know, I look at things from a practical, um, objective-oriented standpoint. I'm a soldier, so I look at what's our objective? Secure the borders. In some places, it may make the most sense to have a wall or some kind of physical barrier in place. In other places, it won't make sense. So you use technology and use all the other tools that we have ultimately to accomplish that objective of yeah. security at the Wait, borders. Wait, let me pause you there. So, is the so as you see there, throughout the rest of the interview, she was kind of I implicitly sort of agreeing with the right-wing framing of Dave Rubin's questions. In that clip you just saw there, she not only is implicitly doing it where she just allows him to do right-wing framing, she outright agrees with the man on his framing, which is completely unacceptable because Democrats are not proposing open borders. And to feed into that right-wing myth is really, really stupid. So it's fine to be like a candidate and be like, I I'm not for open borders, that's fine. But when you're uh, saying that, yeah, you know, I think that there are some Democrats who are for open borders, there was a lot of both sides -ing nonsense from Tulsi in this interview as well, where she was doing a lot of like, oh, there's loonies on the left and there's loonies on the right. Like, come on, the both sides -ing gets a little nauseating after a while as well. But you just can't do that. You cannot play into a right-wing myth like that. And what's funny is the person that she's referring to when she speaks about the whole, uh, you know, uh, oh, I know some candidates like to say that it's a right-wing argument. Uh, that's actually Bernie Sanders. Let's check this out. Something that is in what you said about being a democratic socialist is a more international view. But I think if you take global poverty that seriously, it leads you to conclusions that in the U.S. are considered out of political bounds. Things like sharply raising the level of immigration we permit, even up to the up to a level of open borders, about sharply increasing open the borders. Foreign aid. Open no, borders. That's a, that's a Koch brothers proposal. The really? idea, of course. I mean, that's a right-wing proposal 
which says essentially there is no United States. But it would, anybody can, it would make a lot me. of the global poor richer, wouldn't it? And it would make everybody in America poor. Then you're doing away with, with the concept of a nation state. And I don't think there's any country in the world which believes in that. If you believe in a nation state or in a country called the United States or UK or Denmark or any other country, you have an obligation, in my view, to do everything we can to help poor people. What right-wing people in this country would love is an open border policy. Bring in all kinds of people who work for two or three dollars an hour. That would be great for them. I don't believe in that. I think we have to raise wages in this country. I think we have to do everything that we can to create the millions of jobs. You know what youth unemployment in the United States of America today? If you're white, a white kid, high school graduate, 33 percent, a Hispanic, 36 percent, African American, 51 percent. You think we should open the borders and bring in a lot of low-wage workers? Or do you think maybe we should try to get jobs for those kids? So I think from a moral responsibility, we've got to do work with the rest of the industrialized world to, uh, to address the problems of international poverty, but you don't do that by making people in this country even poorer. So then, so 100% on point here. This is like kind of a, I don't know if you want to call it legendary or marquee, I don't know what the word you'd want to use is, but it's certainly one of those because basically uh, Bernie Sanders is in this clip saying, open borders, what are you talking about? That's a Koch brothers proposal. Now, is it a fact or is it true that open borders is a Koch brother proposal? Yes, it absolutely is. And so the think tanks like the Cato Institute and Learn Liberty and all these other Koch funded think tanks are all, all for open borders. And the reason why they're for open borders, well, Bernie just told you, because you have open borders, you should have a bunch of people come in and you get really low wage work. And so that really helps the Koch brothers, you know, and just sort of rich people in general, because you get to hire people for a couple of bucks an hour. And that's the way it goes, you know what I'm saying? So that is true that that is indeed a Koch Brothers proposal. But open borders simply is not something that is tenable either. You do have to have borders. And also, I have not seen a set of numbers that would actually support how the, uh, the sort of welfare state would be able to hold up with enough of a taxpayer base if you were to take in a bunch of people. Uh, you know, if you were just taking pretty much unlimited amounts of people at that point. But, and Bernie explains it well there, where, you know, you have to do things in an international way where it's like there are still nations, but you use your influence to help them fix their own conditions in their country. That should be the goal. And the U.S. has not only not done that, they've done the opposite of that. We all know that the different foreign interventions that have occurred under Reagan's watch that totally decimated Latin America, we have done absolutely nothing to help any of those countries. We've simply made them worse. Uh, because of, you know, trying to defeat communism or whatever else it may be, other interests that the U.S. had. Um, so, no, that's not the way to go about this. And so, if you're Tulsi Gabbard, and you're on the Dubin Report, and you are sort of saying that, yes, you know, there are multiple candidates in the Democratic presidential race who are for open borders, you are playing into a right-wing mythology and a disinformation campaign that does not help the left. It hurts the left. It helps the right wing because it helps fund their propaganda campaign. That, oh, look, these loony lefties want open borders and they want to do that. Like, no, uh, that's not the position that uh, the Democrats hold. It's not even a, really a tenable position. I don't even know how anybody... So, look, and, and Tulsi outright says there, you know, well... So when she makes that comment about, oh, I know there's a candidate saying that, that's the Bernie comment. That's what... <laughs> That's literally what she's referencing, which is pretty funny to me. But I want to know which candidates are, quote, essentially for or for, quote, essentially open borders. That's what I want to know who she's referring to, because I really don't know any of these candidates who are for open borders. I really don't see it. I also have to say that it does seem to be the case that a lot of these sort of mainstream Democrats are not so sincere in their care for uh, just sort of immigrants and things like that and the wall because if you go back to like 08 like people like Obama and stuff were really sort of uh, very pro wall and things like that it was very odd so their flip does makes me believe that they're not even that honest and genuine about their position on it, and they're just sort of being opportunists or reactionaries to Donald Trump I don't know which way which way you would like to put that but, um, you know, to make it seem as if it's open border, I mean, that's just complete insanity. And so, again, if we're ranking, you know, the appearance between 
uh, Marion Williamson and Tulsi Gabbard. Marion Williamson hit it out of the park. Tulsi Gabbard did horribly. Not only was this a waste of time, she contributed to the right-wing misinformation machine, disinformation machine, and she also gave a boost to his platform because any presidential candidate that appears on the Dubin Report automatically boosts the sort of, uh, I don't know, the platform, if you will, you know, uh, and the recognition and the credibility of the Dubin Report if a presidential candidate shows up on there. So, you know, that is just something that I think is a bad decision. I think that this did not turn out well. I think this was a waste of time. I think all of the things that came from this are negatives. Now, from their point of view, they garner a lot of support from right-wingers and a lot of sympathy from right-wingers, so I don't know if that's their goal. Ultimately, I think this campaign is sort of a uh, an attempt to get more name recognition, which is understandable, to build up for future runs at higher offices, which is understandable. But this is not good. This is unacceptable. And um, I think this was a huge mistake on Tulsi's part, Although I don't think it was really a mistake on her part because she right there just agreed with the framing. So I just think it was a bad move and I don't like it.